Hi guys, I'm Tom Bottiglieri. I hope by now you've seen this year's first game, Rack and Roll. We're here on the field in Manchester, New Hampshire. We're going to be looking at some of the uh, game piece dynamics. So, as most of you know by now, you have this rack, which is absolutely crazy. It moves around in all these different crazy ways. And you have inner tubes, which are very squishy. And they go on like this. But when that happens, there's a few different things we can do. You can put one on up here. You can take another one and put it on on top. But if you try to put a third one on, you will see that it is impossible to score it because only two can fit on. So, only two per rack. So the way that this year's scoring works is similar to in Stack Attack. The first inner tube is worth two points, a second consecutive inner tube is four, then eight, then 16, then 32. So as you keep adding inner tubes in a row, the score gets exponentially higher and higher and higher. So this black tube called a spoiler starts with the human players during the match. They can insert it through the tube insertion channels and place it right over one of your rack and roll rows and it cancels the row right in the middle. So this tube will no longer score and the, the multiplier gets cut right in half and it, it prevents gigantic multipliers from building up and you can disrupt other team's strategies. As you can see, as I shake this one, as I shake this middle one, this bottom one is going all over the place. Even so, if I shake the top one, it, it's even worse. These can get pushed inward as well. So, just, just watch like the bottom ones and how they're going all over the place and how the tubes are bouncing all around. And you're definitely gonna have to account for that if you're trying to drop inner tubes onto these racks. You guys may have noticed that in the beginning of the match, the referees will move this thing. One of the first thoughts that came to my mind is maybe your robot can spin it around the whole time. But I'm just gonna show you how our Jeff wanna help me with this. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, so really don't count on that as a strategy. As you can see, vision targets, one there, one there. There's four of them all in all. So you're gonna be able to track multiples at one time. And what that's gonna do is if you're trying to track one, you might get oh, thanks for another tube. You might get messed up when you're trying to when you see when your camera sees another one. So you're gonna have to account for that in your code. This year, the way human players work is they're allowed to insert tubes and spoilers through these slots in the human player stations and over as well. And they can insert these tubes over the goal or through these slots and hand them to the robots. Now a robot's not allowed to reach through because that's dangerous, but no, you can't do that. So if Tom inserts the tube to me and I'm a robot, I have to wait for it to pass the plane and then I can grab it, take it and carry it to the rack where I can score it. Notice the bungee cords. There, yeah, there's yeah, bungee cords in here so you can't you know, go all over the place. There's bungee cords on either side making you put it in relatively straight so you're not going to be able to like, pass it through at an angle to your robot. It's pretty much just straight through. Right now you're looking from the perspective of the Blue Alliance and from that perspective you can see it's difficult to actually see the tubes on the other side of the rack. So if you're trying to communicate with your alliance partners as to what, what numbers to score on, you might have a difficult time determining which numbers need to have the tubes put on.